with the kettlebell, we've got two different patterns and that's our hip hinge pattern as well as our knee hinge pattern. And obviously one mimics a deadlift, the other mimics a squat. Um, so those are our two main patterns that most, if not all of our exercises with the kettlebell branch off of, and it transfers to a lot of things you'll do, body weight, uh, whether it's power work, strength work, conditioning work, you'll see it a lot. And the kettlebell helps reinforce both of those good patterns and engages a lot of core without you having to think about it. So we start with the two arm swing with two hands on the bell and you'll see it's a good hip hinge. From there, we go one handed. as well as alternate the swing. All of those are our hip hinge pattern. That is, we're using a lot of the posterior chain, uh, almost 100% of it in this contraction, which is probably most vital for all of our athletes, our adults, uh, even our adults, because we lose that posterior chain from sitting down so much. A couple of notes on your hip hinge pattern. The further your elbows come up, the longer you have to wait for your elbows to come down. Our rule of thumb is that the middle of the bell never goes below your knees. So this is a good hip hinge. Notice the bell above the knees. Whereas when my elbows, I don't wait for the bell, the bell is going to drop below. And you'll notice when the bell is below my knees, I can still do this all right, but my back's in a vulnerable position. And not only is my back in a vulnerable position, I'm not getting full force from my hips. Uh, so again, it's not that you're not doing the exercise right, you could be getting more results in less time from it, and that's what I want. Um, and a lot of people, thanks to our CrossFit friends and YouTube videos, the bell comes sometimes think the swing goes up here. Our goal is to achieve weightlessness or just full extension of the hips, regardless if the bell ends up here, here, or here. Beyond this chest height point, you no longer have control of the bell unless you start to pull with your elbows. All you're doing is adding more risk with no reward. No reward, all risk overhead. So your swing right here where the bell's hip height is perfect and ideal for anyone. Going above or where your elbows become unattached, above that hip height is little icing on the cake. Again, you start to increase your risk and decrease your reward. All you need is a bit of a hip hinge, doesn't have to be too drastic, and you need to understand that full hip extension here. Not hyper extension, but full extension, like you do when you're standing up straight. So that's your hip hinge pattern with the kettlebell.